There was a young boy in Mecca. He grew up in the life of luxury. He was a celebrity of Mecca. He was one of the most handsome men of Mecca. He came from a prestigious family. His name was Mus'ab ibn Umair radi Allahu an. When Mus'ab ibn Umair got word that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa was preaching a new message, and he was this, that, and the third, Mus'ab ibn Umair also remembered that this was the same man whom is referred to as Al-Ameen, honest, righteous, upright people in Mecca. So when these words came to him, he didn't jump on the bandwagon and say, yes, we, I agree with all this. No, he said, I'm not going to judge without having spoken to him myself. And this was at a time when the Prophet والسلام, had no outward mission. He was in hiding, they were in secret. He was meeting his very few companions and believers in a house known as Darul Arqam. So Mus'ab found out that this is where the Prophet والسلام, was teaching. So he went one night and he knocked on the door. And someone said, O Messenger of Allah, وسلم, it's Mus'ab ibn Umair. And the Prophet was happy, he was pleased. He said, yes, let him in. He always understood the value of every human being and what role they could have to play in society. When Mus'ab ibn Umair came in, he gave him the simple da'wah of Islam. Upon hearing it, Mus'ab ibn Umair radi Allahu an said, Ashadu in la ilaha illallah wa ashadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah. So he told him to keep it secret and Mus'ab kept it a secret. And he kept coming and meeting the Prophet والسلام, at the house of Arqam. But in the city of Mecca, there were spies. These spies saw Mus'ab ibn Umair going to the house of Arqam and then praying with the Prophet والسلام. They realized he's a Muslim. So they went to Mus'ab's mother and they told him, Do you know that your own son has submitted and become a Muslim? She was shocked. She couldn't believe it. So she confronted him. And he said, Yes, I've become a Muslim. She chained him in his house and put people to watch over him. She could have chained Mus'ab in a basement of a dungeon and it wouldn't have changed anything because whomsoever Allah guides cannot be misguided. So he remained like this for a while. And then the Prophet came out on his mission publicly. You know, people turned on him, things got very hard. So the Prophet والسلام, gave some of the weakest Muslims permission to migrate to Habasha. When Mus'ab ibn Umair heard that there were Muslims who were immigrating, he tricked his mother to let him go. And he went with the Muslims in, into Habasha. And then some time passed, word came to the Muslims of Abyssinia that Islam had taken over in Mecca. The people accepted Islam. So a group of Muslims came back. One of them who came back with them was Mus'ab ibn Umair. When they got back, they realized not only had the situation not gotten better, it actually had gotten worse. No matter how bad things might seem, Allah Azza wa Jal always has a plan for this ummah. Because even during this toughest time, there were people who were coming from a city known as Yathrib. They had been in war for a long time. They had heard about this man Muhammad وسلم, who was bringing peace between people and was preaching this new religion of worshipping one Allah alone. So they met with him on two separate occasions. It's very few of them first and then a group of, larger group of them second. And they accepted Islam pledged their support to the Prophet ﷺ, and they asked him to come with them to Yathrib. But he, he said, I cannot. Because Allah has not given me the permission to do so. So they requested, send someone with us, they can teach us Islam. So the Prophet ﷺ chose someone to send. Now, who was a Muslim at this time? Abu Bakr was a Muslim at this time. Abdul Rahman ibn Awf was a Muslim. Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu an was a Muslim. Some of the senior companions in knowledge were Muslim at this time. But he chose Mus'ab ibn Umair, this young boy, still in his teenage years. The Prophet والسلام, was a visionary. He was not a here and now guy. He sent Mus'ab ibn Umair to Yathrib. He began to teach the Muslims about Islam that were there. And they slowly began to grow. But there were two tribes going at war, the Aus and the Khazraj. The two leaders of this tribe got word that there was a young boy, a kid, a baby, 
in their city preaching a new religion that would separate families, that would cause father to turn against son, son to turn against father, etc. They were furiated. One of them was Sa'ad ibn Mu'adh. The other one was Sa'ad ibn Ra'adah. When Sa'ad ibn Mu'adh heard that this young boy was there, he sent someone first. But when it didn't work, he said, I'm going to go deal with him myself. And when he went to Mus'ab, he had a weapon in his hands. So I'm going to kill him. He's either going to leave or I'm going to kill him. He told him, look, you need to get out of here. Or I'm going to make you leave. Now look at how Mus'ab dealt with him. He looked at him and he said, you're a wise man. You're a leader of your people. You're intelligent. So you should be able to listen to me, discern whether what I'm saying is good or not, choose to accept it or reject it, and if you reject it, I won't bother you or your people. You see, this is the attitude of the believer, the firmness of understanding that the message we have is more powerful than their weapons. And Allah can guide whomever He pleases. Sa'ad ibn Ma'ad said, okay, yeah, he's right. He said, I'm going to listen. So he listened to the simple message of Islam. After hearing it, accepted Islam and went back and called his tribe. And they began to enter into Islam one after another. Then the leader of the other tribe, he said out of jealousy, that if he's good enough to be a Muslim, I'm going to go be a Muslim. It'd be better one than him. Competition. So he accepted Islam. And then Islam began to take over in Yathra. The Prophet ﷺ before every battle, he would always choose someone for a special task on that day. And they would be the most special person on the battlefield. The person who held the flag. The person who held the banner of Tawheed. On this day, he called for Mus'ab ibn Umair. The same boy that lived in the labs of luxury, who grew up in decadence, now was the most poor of the companions. He used to wear sackcloth of harsh wool that would make sores on his body. When the companions saw him, they would cry because they remember who he was. Now, the only things he had in this life were his love for Allah and his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That was his possessions. On that day, the Prophet gave him the flag. Your job, keep this up. Few companions were put on the hill. They weren't put on Mount Ahad. And they were told not watch because there was a route that could be come from behind. And we know the Muslims gained an initial victory and the archers left their place except but a few. And Khalid ibn Walid seized upon the opportunity, came back, turned that victory into a defeat. Started routing the Muslims. And then there was confusion. And someone got to the Prophet wasallam and struck him and knocked him down cut a gash in his face, took out one of his teeth, and they thought they'd killed him, and they started spreading the rumor, Muhammad is dead. When that rumor began to spread, many Muslims just sat down. They didn't know what to do. Just sat down thinking, it's over. And then another rumor came, no, he's alive. So these two rumors were being spread. Then the rumor got to Mus'ab ibn Umayr radiallahu anh, that Muhammad is dead, what are you doing? His response, Muhammad is nothing but a messenger. The messengers have passed away before him. And then they said, no, he's alive. With us, protect him. So what did Mus'ab and Umair do? He jumped in the front of the lines and started to draw attention to himself. If you want to fight someone, fight me. And someone came and struck off the arm that was holding the flag in his hand. He simply reached down and picked it up with the other hand and began to draw attention to himself again. Saying, if you want to fight with someone, fight me so that the Prophet ﷺ could escape safely. And then someone came and took off the other arm holding the flag. <laughs> the same boy who grew up in decadence, who loved the Prophet ﷺ so much, loved Allah ﷺ even more, it wasn't enough. He bent down and picked up the flag with his teeth and began to draw attention to himself again until he was struck and struck and struck and struck and struck again, swords and spears, and he hit the ground. Nothing left in him, and he died. The Prophet ﷺ and the Muslims retreated up into the mountain of Uhud. While they were there, the Meccans mutilated the bodies of the dead Muslims, cutting off their noses and their ears and trampling them with their horses. 
after they left, the Prophet ﷺ went back down onto the battlefield to sort out the affairs of the dead believers. But there was a few people he was asking about. Have you seen so and so? He wanted to know, have you seen Jaffa? Have you seen Hamza? Has any of you seen Mus'ab? When the Prophet ﷺ found Mus'ab ibn Umair, they had cut off his nose and, and, and ears. They had trampled him with their horses. He had almost a hundred stab wounds and spear wounds in him. But one thing they did find was they found the flag was still between his teeth. He never abandoned his duty. And the Prophet began to cry about Mus'ab, saying that you gave everything for the sake of Allah. So they sent people to collect the property of the martyrs because it gets distributed right away and then to find their kafan, their, their shroud. So when they went to get the shroud and the property of Musa ibn Umayr, they brought back three things. He had a, a bowl to make wudu and a ghusl and half of a shroud. He couldn't afford a full one. And the Prophet ﷺ just cried. This young boy who grew up in this life of decadence now didn't even have enough to die in. He didn't even possess enough in this life to be buried. So the Prophet covered his head and his feet would stick out. So he started his feet, his head would stick out. So they wrapped his head and they covered his feet in lemongrass and they buried him right where he laid. But we all know before his body was ever put in that ground. That soul that was attached to Allah and His Messenger وسلم, was in Jannah. And every day he is asked by Allah, what can I give you? What do you want? I want to give you more. What do you want from me? And these people who live hanging off the throne of Allah Azza wa Jal, they never want anything. So finally they will realize one day that Allah will not stop asking us unless we tell Him what we want. And they will respond, Our Lord, if you could give us one thing, then let us go back to that life and die again in that same way, again and again and again and again. It's all we would ask for. It was a life that was lived. Even though he barely made it to adulthood, in most cases we wouldn't have ever considered him an adult yet. He lived a life that we will memorize and that we remember to this day. When his name is mentioned to someone who really believes, to someone who really understands, it causes chills. Because this young man set a platform in Yathrib that would have it become known as Medina to Nabi, upon which the Prophet ﷺ would send Islam to the whole world.